over. I'm going to make an incision up the belly of this beaver and then basically pull it apart this way, much like the deer hide was, uh, which is what we call an open skin, okay? And a case skin is where you basically make the incision around, around the feet, around the back here, and then basically pull it off almost like a sock. Now this stone is a piece of obsidian. It's razor sharp. I'm going to start right around the anus section here. Now, with the beaver, we've got what we call the castorium glands here, and that's these two little protruding glands right, right in this section, right on the front side of the anus. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an incision around here, and then I'm going to make that right up the belly, and then from there we're going to open it up nice and wide. I do not want to make this incision too deep. Okay, if I puncture, remember yesterday what Stu was talking about with the fish? Mm -hmm. If we get into those guts, then what we do is we start to taint the meat. I want to make sure I got the sharpest part of this. How, how have you been storing that beaver today? Awesome. It's been basically, remember we were talking about um, aging meat? Yeah. This has been kept at a cool temperature so that basically... What happens when heat takes over is anaerobic decomposition takes place. You've seen it on the side of the road, I'm sure. You pass the raccoon in the morning, you come back at the end of the day and its legs are kind of like this. You come back the next day and its legs are like, and its belly's really bloated. That's because of all that bacteria in the belly It's just kept doing what it naturally does. The further along that rotting process takes place, especially if you're dealing with a fur-bearing mammal, um, that, the great way to check if it's too rotten is to pull on the belly fur. You can see with this guy, it hasn't rotted in the slightest because all that fur is still very nice and um, it's tight. Mm -hmm. If that rot process starts to take place, the hair just will pull out by the handful. Mm -hmm. And it's a good indication, that's one for the PC. I one time came across a uh, dead porcupine on the side of Highway 7 in between Ottawa and Peterborough and I stopped, checked it out. Sure enough, it turns out that it was a porcupine that had gotten hit, and then a fisher who loves to eat porcupine meat, one of the only animals that can actively kill, um, by choice, porcupines. And sure enough, this fisher had its head inside its butt, like full on inside, <laughs> and a transport truck <laughs> hit the porcupine and killed the fisher inside of it. And that's when I came across it. Holy moly. And then you went to the <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, to be honest, Basically looks like a draw knife, right? Um, but this is what um, this is what most people use today uh, when they're fleshing out deer hides or beaver or what the case may be. Another thing, um, another way to do it, um, if you don't have any steel tools, is literally to take the rib bone out of the animal. Especially if you're using a deer, a moose, cow bones, they work awesome for it really, really proficient at, at this. So um, I'm going to take this deer hide now and I'm going to put it up on the fleshing beam. Okay, there's various different designs that you can use for
making your fleshy boom. Sometimes they're straight across. Sometimes you just stake this out on the ground. Um, I hate to use the example, but the movie was well done, so I'll give it credit. Dances with Wolves. You can picture uh, when they've just harvested a bunch of bison and they're tacked out to the ground. And they're all sitting around with various different hand tools that look a little bit more like this. And at that stage of the game, they were fleshing that hide. Okay? Because it was staked out, it's easy to put pressure against the hide itself. Right? What this, is, this little setup's designed to do is to allow me to basically pinch right here with my body leaning against it and then I can push. And I'm going to get to a point where there is quite a bit of flesh because as you can see here there's almost nothing left. Right? But you really do want to get it down so that when you push your tool across it there's almost nothing coming off. See that little bit of fat on there? That's that McDonald's grease coming off the fries that I was talking about before. Okay? You want to get rid of that stuff because it will penetrate right in there and it will make those, those final stages of the process really difficult. This one is a little funky. You see? What's with the discolored Yeah, that's that's because it got warm. It started to rot. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, bang on. And you can scrape that off no problem. It doesn't. Well, part of that, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to degrease it somewhat later on to get rid of that process. But of the 50 hides that I worked last year. Um, this one that's gone through the whole winter and then come out the other side, we're doing pretty good. I feel good about it. Um, you see how I'm just literally pushing this off? I'm pushing right to the edges. Some of the hair is coming with it. That's great. I can deal with all that. But when we're done fleshing, you can see that, oh, I got right through it there. That's okay. Soft spot. On in here, I like just brightened up for us too. See how I'm scraping and I'm scraping and I'm scraping and I'm scraping and there's almost nothing coming off? Mm -hmm. That's when you're done. Okay. When nothing else is coming up from the tool, then you're done. Okay. Yeah, and it, it's pretty much that simple. Put it up on a rack like this. And this is a cowhide, one that we harvested last fall uh, from the, the local farmer, um, the guy that we're renting a place from. and. This cow taught us a lot. Um, we ran a class in the fall called Using the Whole Animal. As a group, we basically took the animal and butchered it from start to finish to the point where we were feasting on the meat uh, when everything was all said and done in a two-day class we call Using the Whole Animal. And um, the, I'm still scraping on it. This section of the hide is pretty close to being done. There's a little bit left to do. But um, when I talk about scraping the hide and mechanically removing it, it is just that. I'm going to be taking this little piece of steel and taking just a little bit off every time I take a stroke. And I, I show you like this because it's much more of a circular motion. I'm not just going to put this in here and pull down because that's where I'm going to start popping holes. You can yeah, see this you. section right here, gang. I'm going to continue on with what I started with here. Um, in and around the rump area, so on this side, and then again right here, almost in those circles, just like that, there's really, really, really thick hide. Um, I think you may be able to see a piece of it up here. Where's the thick, thick, thick spot? Right in here. I can bend this down. You can see how thick this hide is. See how thick that is? It's almost like three quarters of an inch thick. That's right around the neck. It's super, super, super thick all through this region. The armpits are really skinny, really thin. You just need to remove a little bit of hide in there. And then it gets fairly thin through the belly section. And then, like I said, right in the rump area, it's really, um, really thick hide. And if you think about where the thick spots are, it's where the hide, literally, if it was just a blanket thrown over the animal itself, the thick spots are where the hide actually is, there's tension and it pulls on the animal itself. So it's really natural. It's, it's very similar in every type of animal. Um, and as I go about this, what I'm going to try to do is concentrate on like a, a two by two or a four by four section. Complete that section and then move on. Because if I just take a, a scrape here and a scrape here and a scrape here, um, without any recognition of really trying to get right down to the final buffed up layer, then um, 
I'm never going to get that evenness that I'm really looking for. And then later on in the process, it's going to be difficult when I begin to start to uh, put the oils in. Okay? And if you forget about what you're doing at any time, it's real easy to pop through this. Right? This is a piece of steel. It's not sharp, but it is, uh, it, it is pointy. Okay? And a little bit at a time, start to pull this off. Now everything I've showed you at this stage is considered the dry scrape method and you should do this dry. Yes. So you rack it up and when you rack it you want to be able to push on the hide a little bit. It won't, you don't want it to be taut like a drum when it's wet because when it dries it'll break your frame. That's well on its way. That's really, that's really good.